All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to take a partial derivative. Now, this is a huge topic in Calculus 3. It's, it, you're going to be taking partial derivatives for the rest of the time that you are in Calculus 3. So we really gotta make sure that you understand this and you understand it well. All right, so before we talk about how to take a partial derivative, we need to talk about what a partial derivative actually is. So let's get started. Now, you'll see that on the left side of my screen here, I have a parabola, right? And if we were to take a derivative with respect to x at this point a comma b, you'll get the slope, right? And the slope is going to just point in this direction, right? And it's, it's, it's very straightforward, okay? But now, on the right side of my screen, you'll see that it's not as straightforward, right? And we're talking about this three-dimensional surface here, and how, what does a derivative even mean here? Okay, you can, I mean, there's so many different directions that you can go in, right? You can go in this direction, maybe this one, or this one, right? And you see my point. Okay, there's an infinite number of directions there. So what we're gonna have to do is basically we take a derivative in a certain direction, and that is a partial derivative, okay? So let's talk about a partial derivative with respect to x here, okay? Say f of, it looks like a sub x, okay? At a comma b, okay? That's a, that's a way to write a partial derivative. Another way that you may see a partial derivative is with these curly d's, okay? It's not, don't mistake it for like this kind of d, okay, it's like this. Okay, big difference there. Um, anyways, so, if we take a partial derivative with respect to x, I'm just gonna use this first notation here. What that's going to tell us is it's going to tell us the slope in the x direction, okay? It's telling us that slope in the x direction. And just as you can take a partial derivative with respect to x, you can also do it with respect to y, all right? So let's do that here, we can I'll pick another color here, dark blue. We can do it with respect to y, okay? Take a partial derivative with respect to y, okay? Now, if it was a higher dimensional surface or something like that, you can take a partial derivative with respect to z. Here, z is our, our main variable, right? So we're only taking partial derivatives with respect to x and y. Okay, so don't get confused, like you can actually take a, a partial derivative with respect to z, that's more like higher dimensional space, but anyways, so you kind of understand the whole idea now, all right? So that's what a partial derivative is, now let's find them. Okay, so here I have our first example, and that's find the partial derivative with respect to x at 1 comma 2, and the partial derivative with respect to y at 1 comma 2, if your you have f of x comma y equals x to the fourth times y to the third plus six x cubed y. Okay, so first we have to take a partial derivative with respect to x, okay? And to denote that we're taking it with respect to x, I'll draw in purple, okay? So we have that f of x, or not f of x, you say the partial derivative with respect to x is going to equal, so here's the idea, now we're, going to have to hold y constant, okay? We're taking a derivative derivative with respect to x, not y, okay? So we're viewing y, and if we're in higher dimensions, any other variable, we're holding it constant, okay? x's are the only thing that we're taking the derivative of, okay? So if we're to view y as constant here, what you're going to see is that, of course, we have this y cubed out front, and then we take the derivative of x to the fourth, and that's 4x to the third. Okay, on the same token, we can take a derivative of this second piece here, 6x cubed y, and we're just going to have that 6y, that's all constants, and we have x cubed, that's going to be 3x squared. Okay, so you can kind of see what's happening here, right? We're holding that y constant, we're have everything else we're viewing as constants except for that x. Okay, so let's simplify it down here. We get that, we can, we can actually, let's just simplify this a little bit here. We have 4x cubed y cubed plus 
this is going to be 18 x squared y okay and now let's just plug in one comma two okay to finish off this partial derivative with respect to x when we plug in one and two we get four times one cubed times two cubed plus 18 times one squared times two okay and that's going to be equal to we have now a four times eight which is 32 plus 18 times two which is 36 and that's going to give us our partial derivative with respect to x at one comma two which is 68 okay so now that we've taken a partial derivative with respect to x we're going to take a partial derivative with respect to y at that same point okay and it's just basically the same process so I'll do this in green now our partial derivative with respect to y at x comma y is going to be well here's our function up here okay this is our this is our function and if we are taking a partial derivative with respect to y, we're going to have to hold the x's constant now. Okay, we hold the x's constant. It's just the y's that we're talking about here. So partial derivative with respect to y. We're gonna have x to the fourth out here. Okay, that's a constant. And the derivative of y cubed is three y squared. We're gonna add, we have a six x cubed. Those are constants. Derivative of y is one. Okay, so already we have our partial derivative with respect to y. All that's left to do is plug in one comma two. And we do that, we just get one to the fourth times three times two squared plus six times one cubed. And simplifying that, we get our partial derivative of y at one comma two, which is gonna be what well, we have a three times two squared that's going to be 12 plus 6 is 18. Okay, so right there, now you have your partial derivative with respect to y. Okay, so this is actually pretty simple, right? As long as you can see that, hey, I have to hold these variables constant here, okay? Then it actually becomes really simple. Okay, so that's how you can make partial derivatives really easy for yourself is just getting used to doing that, right? Because that's something new. We've never really had to hold variables constant like that when taking derivatives. Let's move on to our next example here. We want to find, and you can see the other notation for partial derivatives here, find the partial derivative with respect to x, okay? And we wanna find the partial derivative with respect to y when, and we have our function here, okay? When f of x comma y equals xy over x minus y. All right, so you can see here that we're going to have to use some quotient rule, okay? now nobody likes quotient rule okay that's like the my least favorite way to take a derivative it's probably everybody's least favorite way to take a derivative but it's got to be done here so let's just get it over with okay to take our partial derivative with respect to x remember the formula for the quotient rule is u prime v minus v prime u over v squared so our u is our numerator our v is our denominator u prime Okay, remember we're taking that partial derivative with respect to x here. So we, of course, are just going to be left with y, okay? Because x is going to be that variable. We take a derivative of x, that's one, and we're left with that y. So we have y times v is x minus y. That's gonna be minus v prime is the derivative of the bottom with respect to x, which is just going to be one okay that minus y goes away that's a constant and the derivative of x is one and that's going to be times the top which is xy and that goes over v squared is x minus y quantity squared now we can simplify this by distributing that y through we get y x minus y squared minus xy over x minus y quantity squared and you can see that that xy is going to cancel out. So we're just left with our partial derivative with respect to x, which is negative y squared over x minus y quantity squared. Okay, there you go. So you still can do things like product rule and quotient rule and, and things like that, right? And, and even chain rule, but you know now you still have to remember to hold one variable constant.
Okay, let's move on to the partial derivative with respect to y. Okay, and I'll do that in, let's go blue. Honestly, the hardest part about making these videos is choosing the color. So we have that partial derivative with respect to y. Again, we have to use the quotient rule, v prime u, v squared. And what's u prime gonna be? Well, now that we're taking a partial derivative with respect to y, we are going to just have x, all right? That's, that's the derivative of x, y with respect to y is just going to be x. And we multiply by v, the bottom, which is x minus y. We subtract v prime, which is just going to be negative one, all right? Because we're taking, remember, with respect to y. The x goes away, that's a constant. Derivative of negative y is gonna be negative one. So we have uh, that, that v prime, which I said was negative one. So that's gonna be plus one. Now we have u, which is x, y, and we have over v squared, which is again, x minus y quantity squared. And just as we distributed that y through, we're gonna distribute the x through here to get x squared minus x, y plus x, y. And that's gonna be over x minus y quantity squared. You can already see that those minus x, y's, uh, the minus x, y and the plus x, y cancel out. And you're left with your partial derivative with respect to y, which is x squared over x minus y quantity squared. So now you have your two partial derivatives. And I can even take that up, move it right next to each other. All right, missed that too. There we go. So you can see your two partial derivatives, all right, from that original function, okay? Now, this basically all stays the same when you go into higher dimensions, because you'll probably have problems where it's, you know, w is equal to, is a, is a function of x, y, z, right? So, you know, you're just still holding that very, or you're holding all other variables constant, except for the variable that you're taking the partial derivative with respect to okay so that that's the whole idea here okay so you know just as a brief recap for this video okay we talked about how in two dimensions right a derivative was pretty straightforward in three dimensions it becomes a little more skewed right you see how there was, you know, there's there's multiple arrows that I could draw here. There's multiple derivatives you could take, okay? So by taking a derivative in a certain direction, okay, now we have something that, that makes sense, right? We have a slope that makes sense. And those are the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. And we did some examples of finding partial derivatives. And to do that, we just hold if we're taking a partial derivative with respect to x, we hold y constant, okay? And, and that's basically it, okay? So that is gonna do it for this video. So if this video helped you, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. If there's anything that you're unsure about, leave a comment in the comment section below. And also, if you want to support me in the form of currency, I have my Patreon linked in the description, so you can definitely go check that out.